Hello, Hope Fellowship. I'm Brian Swanson, Chairman, and I'm here this morning to talk to you about our transition plan back to on-site worship. We're excited to have people back, and there's a lot of things going on, so I've got four things I want to explain this morning, and uh, I'll go through those. First, we want to communicate where we are as a church in the phases of transitioning back, what those phases are and how they're going to take place. We want to communicate a special gift that was given that will allow us to do some things that maybe we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And there's some details around that. We're gonna give a tour of what's being done right now here on site. So you'll see some of the changes in the building and the facility and some of the flow and different things that are being done. And then finally, I wanna encourage you to pray. And there'll be some very specific things that I want you to be praying and thinking about as we transition back to on site worship. Our transition back to on-site worship will happen in three phases. Preparation, open with restrictions, and when timing is right, we'll move to open without restrictions. Preparation will happen in four sections, research, communication, configuration of the building, and implementation of technology. I'd like to take you on a tour to show you what's going on right now in the preparation phase. It's gonna be important as we transition back is to keep a flow of traffic that allows everybody to be safely socially distanced. And so the new entrance, as you can see, down here is where you would have normally entered the building, but now you're gonna be entering on either this end, and later I'll show you where you would enter on the other end, so that there's one entrance that people can move through into the service, so follow me. As you enter the building through the new entrance, you'll come to a greeting table. Well, we, we will be keeping track of counts of people that are entering the building, and not only at this entrance, but we'll be keeping track at the other entrance, and we'll be communicating back and forth to make sure that we don't exceed the capacity that we are safely able to have in the building. Our goal through this whole process has been to provide options for you to worship the way that you're comfortable. I received a survey asking you how you prefer to come back to worship. We took that data and decided how to break up the facility, the locations, and the size of the rooms that we're using for different purposes. In that survey, here's what we learned. First, 70% of the people who responded preferred an option where they could choose whether they're gonna follow the CDC guidelines to wear a mask or not. So that's a large percentage. 24% said, you know what, we prefer to stay home and live stream. And about 6% said, we need a service, we'd like a service where we can be fully protected, follow every guideline and be as safe as possible. Let me show you all the work that's been done and is being done as we work towards that transition back to services on site so that you understand a little bit about why we can't just move directly back to on site worship. So follow me into some of the areas. First off, in the worship center, our capacity typically is 422 people. We are allowed 50% of that, so that's, uh, what is it, 211? And so 211 people can be in this room, but as you can see, everything has begun to be reconfigured so that we can ensure that we have things set up so that you can remain socially distanced as you worship. When we went to, we transitioned to uh, recording services and playing them on Sunday so that you could come to church from home, we had to rearrange all of the technology. So all of the the equipment in this room got moved, changed, um, and, and reconfigured in order to do that in a really high quality way. Now, as we transition back, all of that needs to be redone. And because we're offering simulcast within the building and we're gonna be offering streaming, not only does it all have to be put back together, but there's a whole new element to it. In order to mix sound, record sound, and transfer sound in a good way, I wanna show you back here in the back of the room some, just a little bit of what's already begun to happen to make all of those technologically difficult tasks come together. Okay, as you can see, we're standing back where the sound is typically mixed in the back of the congregation and the, the displays are handled for the music. 
And um, I'm gonna pretend for just a minute that I understand this in some form because it's been explained to me and I wanna do my best to explain it to you. But what happens back here on a typical Sunday is all of the sound that's coming from Josh speaking and the musicians and, and all of the activity that's going on is brought into a mixing board through all this cabling and all the things that are going on. And that mixing board, the purpose of that is to adjust all of the sound bouncing around this room in such a way that it sounds audible, understandable, and it sounds right to you when you're sitting in the room. And there's a whole bunch of technology and intelligent people back here doing that. The challenge now is if we were to take that mix of sound and try to send it out to the world in that format, it's mixed to sound right in this room. But when you hear it coming through your computer speakers or your TV speakers, frankly, it's gonna sound really bad because you don't have the benefit of the sound bouncing throughout this room. So what we have to do is not only have this, but we need to take that electronic uh, signal of sound to another room where we don't have all of the, the interactions in this room and mix it in such a way that it sounds good coming into another room within the building and streaming live out to all the homes. Where what we've been doing is recording everything, mixing it once and playing that recording. Now all of that has to happen live. So big task, reconfiguring all of the technology in order to do that. And it's important that we do it really well because it's happening live. It can't break down, it, it can't stop. People are counting on us to provide a quality experience when they're either in another room in this building or streaming from home. So this is a challenge. Let's stop there. Okay, here's the thing. In order to do this and add all of this technology to what we've been doing, there's an expense and it's not insignificant. The good news is over the past several months, we as, as a leadership team have been working through a plan to communicate to the congregation the, the fact that we received a significant gift uh, to support our ministries. And uh, the plan is to communicate that gift in such a way that we create some momentum around it. And we, we wanna encourage you as a congregation to come together and, and help match that gift so that we've, we can do even more than, than what we're able to do with what we were given. At the same time, this created an opportunity for us to do what needs to be done due to this transition. And so we do wanna use some of that gift to apply to this purpose. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the, the, the big picture of the gift. We received $100,000 with the intent that that money would be used to expand our ministries. And so there's a lot of information that will be coming out in the near future to help everybody understand what the intent of that money is. The bottom line though is we've been asked to expand our ministries. And what better opportunity to expand our ministries right now than online streaming. So it fits perfectly with the donor's intent. It fits perfectly with what we intended to communicate with you as a, a, the congregation as we put the communication plan together. And so we are able to do what we need to do in a very effective way and do it well. And so we're excited about that. We're excited about this gift and there'll be more information coming related to the gift so that you can participate in that as well. One of the things that's really important for us in order to be as safe as possible on site is that we think about how we minimize the potential of transfer of the virus from one person to the other. Some of the things that are going on related to that is we have a different method of delivering communion. These fellowship cups have the communion um, drink and the, the wafer in the cup so that the, you individually will be grabbing your communion rather than having somebody else hand it to you and passing plates and so forth. In addition, offering becomes a little bit of a challenge 
So we've added offering boxes throughout the facility that you'll see where you will drop your offering in, again, rather than handing a plate from person to person. You'll see throughout the building, they aren't here yet, but hand sanitizer stations, wipe uh, stations where you can choose to wipe off door handles or surfaces as you're moving through the, the building. Doors will be propped open or removed so you don't have to grab the door handle to open them. Traffic patterns. Um, after the service here in what we're, we've come to kind of call the general admission room as well as other rooms, you'll be dismissed in groups and you'll travel out the back so that you're leaving all in the same direction. You'll move around through the back of the service and go out the middle door where you normally would be coming in, you go out that door and fellowship will happen outside where there's plenty of room to keep distance. All these things we're trying to do to make sure that everywhere possible, we're minimizing the potential for the spread of the virus. So I just shared with you general admission. Let's go in and look at the premium seating. This room is set up for a little bit smaller group. We've got tables where families can sit, one family per table, um, a little bit nicer seating potentially, a little bit more comfortable. And this is a room where the service will be simulcast into. So we can handle the conditions a little bit differently in this room than maybe they would be in the general admission room. Okay, next, I wanna show you a little bit about the suite. So I'm gonna walk in here. This happens to be one of the children's rooms. Right now, children's programming is being worked out as part of our preparation. We don't have all the details of that, but the, this room is one of the rooms that we're calling a suite. The purpose of this is we understand that sometimes families with young kids are not gonna be able to be effectively social distanced in the general admission seats. And so we've created some rooms where you can reserve the room um, and you can be here with us worshiping on site. Again, we'll simulcast the service into this room. And if your kids are running around and maybe not able to sit still, you're in a controlled space that you can, you can use as you see fit. I want, to remind, I want to make sure you understand these rooms, we're going to need people to let us know when you want to use these rooms and anything that you need prepared. We're going to do our best to make sure that they're prepared the way the people that are going to be in here need them to be prepared. Bathrooms become a challenge when you're trying to minimize the spread of virus and people need to be going in and out of the restroom. So if you need to use the restroom, there's a few things we'd like you to keep in mind. First. Door handles, you're gonna to be touching door handles. Obviously it's important when you're in the restroom to wash your hands um, and, and be extra careful as you're, as you're doing that. We want you to take a paper towel after washing your hands and use that when you touch the door handle. So opening and closing the door with a, with a paper towel, dispose of that and as you leave the restroom, there will be, not here yet, they're coming, there will be a hand sanitizer for you to re-sanitize your hands just in case anything transferred. During the phase of services with restrictions, there will not be nursery available, so keep that in mind. But as you can see, we're using this room to store a lot of the stuff that needs to be reorganized and moved out of other spaces in order to make the things happen that we're, we're putting in place. So what you see behind me is our normal entrance to the church service, and I'm headed down towards the youth space. Um, certainly the youth group is aware of this. Some of you may not be aware that we actually have another entrance down on this end of the facility that goes into the room that we've been using as a youth group. This space is going to be used now as the service opportunity for those people who want to make sure that they're following every guideline and be as safe as they possibly can be when they worship. So as you enter here, there will be a similar greeting station where we'll be keeping track and communicating the number of people that are in the building so we make sure we don't um, go beyond what is recommended and anything that needs to be taken care of as you enter the building will happen here. You'll notice 
We have an offering box here, similar to on the other side, so we can keep that separate. Uh, there'll be signage throughout this side of the building, both sides of the building, explaining flow and instructions on anything. So I know there's a lot of information. It'll all be posted on signs. There's a restroom on this side for the use of the people here that they won't be um, having to transition to the other side of the building. We've got two rooms available. This isn't quite set up the way we need it to yet. We need to make sure there's a little more social distancing. We're working through the details of that, but service will be simulcast live into this room. Very comfortable, warm setting. And then um, the 45 room, similarly, a little bit of work left to do here, but larger screen, a little bit of space that uh, people can spread out into these two rooms. The doors between the two sides of the building will be locked, so there'll be no people moving from one side to the other, potentially transferring um, virus or, or mixing. So all of this is set up for those people who want to make sure that we have done all of the things we can do to make you feel safe when you're here worshiping while still being on site. If you're interested in getting involved in helping with this transition, all of this work that needs to be done, please contact Josh. He's coordinating all these efforts and he's got a detailed plan and there's many things that you can get involved in. So please, if, if you're at all interested, please give Josh a call. And probably the most important thing that we have to say this morning is we need you to pray. And, and very specifically, um, there are some risks in returning to on-site worship. So please pray for the health of our people. Pray that all of these things that we're doing effectively limit the spread of this virus. Please pray for unity in our church because Everybody has different opinions, and especially the way our environment is right now, a lot of these opinions are emotionally charged. We need to have unity as a church, and we need to understand that, that everybody's opinion, although it may be different, we all are searching after the same goal of serving God in the most effective way. So pray for unity. Pray for our staff. Uh, and our volunteers, all of the work that's being, being done, and pray for our community. Uh, pray that this new ministry opportunity of live streaming uh, touches the hearts of the people where they need to be touched and, and causes a change in our community that we um, actively are changing the world for Jesus Christ. Congregation, we're excited. We're, uh, we believe that God has a huge plan for the coming year and that we're uniquely suited to do this well, that he's got us right where we want, he wants us, and that we are the people that he wants to use in a very effective way in our community. We look forward to seeing you back at Hope Fellowship uh, and um, choose the option that makes sense for you. Last thing I'll say is, it is important that you make your decision. We, there's no way that we can ensure that you will not come in contact with virus when we come together as a, as a congregation. We're gonna do everything we can to keep you safe, but you need to make the decision of what option you choose. Our job is to provide as many options as we can.